Okay, let's talk about torque and how some of these things work and see if we can figure out how to do some of these on paper. Okay? Torque is, I call it like a twisting force. It's the rotational equivalent of force where we've got two different equations for torque. We've got torque is force cross distance. Now that cross means that this force and that distance, actually we should call it displacement, are at right angles to each other or components are at right angles to each other. Or we can say torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. This is the equation that most closely resembles the one from linear motion where it's just F equals MA where torque is the analog of force, moment of inertia is the analog for mass, and angular acceleration is, well, acceleration. We can find torque, well, there's a couple ways we can do it. We can call it Newton meters, or more recently, I think they're using more meters Newton, because I think they get that from the English system, because in the English we call it foot pounds. Force is in Newtons, displacement is in meters, and we really should call that a displacement. Although a lot of times we just say distance. I is moment of inertia, which has that as its unit. And alpha is angular acceleration, which in, is in radians per second squared. So to start things out, let's take a look at this one. We've got a disc that has a mass of 35 kilograms, radius of 1.4 meters. We need to figure out a torque that will give an acceleration of 8 radians per second squared. Well, first of all, it's a disk. The moment of inertia for a disk is one half m r squared. So we need to figure that out first. So one half mass was 35 and the radius was 1.4 and that squared. So 0.4 squared times 35, take half of that. So we get a moment of inertia of 34.3 kilograms meter squared. We just need to calculate that before we get going. And so now we can figure out the torque on the system. Or in this case, we're going to use torque equals I alpha because it matches what we have. I was 34.3 and alpha is 8 radians per second. So we just take 34.3 times 8, and the torque on this object, or this disk, is 274.4 Newton meters. So if we just want to figure out torque, we can just take moment of inertia times angular acceleration, or we can take the force across the displacement if we're just looking for torque. Now a lot of times we have a system that we want to keep in balance. And in engineering, we call those static type questions, where we want everything to stay still. So let's look at one of the most famous problems is the seesaw problem. In this case, we've got a two kilogram bar uh, that's used, being used as a seesaw. Uh, we've got a fulcrum. That little, little triangle-like thing is our fulcrum. And we're gonna measure all distances from that fulcrum. And we've got a 20 kilogram mass that's 1.2 meters to the left. Got that drawn in. How far to the right? So we're going to look at where we need to place this 35 kilogram mass. Now, just looking, just thinking about this, if we want this to balance, this side has more mass, so it needs to be closer to the fulcrum in order to balance this part out. Just think about those days if you ever saw a teeter totter. And uh, we got one kid on one side, one kid on the other, and one kid gets off the other side, you just clap. So we want to do that. We want to figure out where to place this in order to balance things out. So the easiest way to do it is to set it up like this. Now, I know in most textbooks, they'll, they'll do it this way. They'll want to have where the sum of the torques equals zero. And so they will want to take the torques that are counterclockwise minus the torques that are clockwise and set that equal to zero. And that's perfectly fine if you want to do it that way. 
I like to jump in a little bit after this step and just go with this. Then I want to take the torques counterclockwise and make sure that they're equal to the torques clockwise in order to bounce out. So we've got to decide which mass is causing this to turn counterclockwise and which mass is causing it to turn clockwise. So on this one, this right here should cause this the whole thing to turn this way. So this is going to be our counterclockwise. And that is force cross distance of that one equals the force cross distance or displacement of this other one. So, oh, well, we got force, and that's a mass. Well, to get force, that's the weight of the object. So we just need to multiply by gravity, which is 9.8. Now, technically, you can get away from that step because if we look at this, we have mass times gravity of that one cross its distance equals mass cross distance of the second. And those should equal each other. Well, we got gravity on both sides, so we can technically cancel those out. But on this first problem, I'm going to go ahead and leave that in just to see what we get. So we get 20 times 9.8 and distance, since these are at right angles, because gravity is pulling down, that distance is over this way, so it does make a nice right triangle right there. So I can just multiply this by 1.2, equals the mass over here, which is 35, times 9.8, times this unknown distance, which again, since that force is down in this lever arm, is going that way, it does make a right angle. So we can just multiply. So we can just calculate this. So 20 times 9.8 times 1.2 equals that. Now we got to divide this side, so divide 35, and we're going to divide by 9.8. And we get that we can place this other object a distance of 0 0.6, let's call it 9 meters from the fulcrum. Again, remember, all distances are measured from the fulcrum. And that makes sense, that this should be in closer in order to balance this out. Let's take a look at another. On this one, we've got the fulcrum not at the center of mass. We've got a 0.8 kilogram bar that is 3 meters long. That means that center of mass should be 1.5 meters from either side. The bar is used a 600 newton force is applied at an angle 20 degrees to the horizontal. Okay, we want to uh, figure out how much mass we need to put there, two meters away, in order to balance out the system. So we got a, several things going on with this problem. The first one is that we've got a force at an angle, and I want to know how much force is going straight down because remember. The force and the displacement have to be at right angles to each other. So the displacement sideways, so that means the force has to be vertical. So that angled force right there, some of that force is acting, let me see if I can get in a good spot, some of that force is acting down, and some of that force is acting in. Well, that force is acting in is not putting this system at any type of torque. It's only this part that's going down. And so, to figure that out, force in that y is equal to that hypotenuse force times the sine of the angle. So that would be 600 sine of 20 degrees. And so that vertical force is 205.2. Let's call it 2-1 newtons. Okay, we had to figure that out. Now, we also need to do this. The fulcrum is there. So, if this board is 3 meters long, that means from this edge over to center mass is 1.5 meters. Well, that fulcrum is 0.8 meters in. So, that means the distance from here to the center mass is going to be 0.7 meters. We need to make sure we locate that because the weight of this board in, do this. Don't get into the habit of trying to figure out 
how much percentage of the mass is over here versus how much percentage of the mass is over here and where the center of this side is and where the center of that side is. You're just asking for a world of pain because that just complicates things. We know the mass of the bar. We say the entire mass is located at that center mass and everything else is just kind of fluff. All right, that will help you out in the long run. So the center mass or the mass of the board is going to cause it to turn clockwise. This unknown mass is going to cause it to turn clockwise. The only thing making it go counterclockwise is this downward component of that force at that location. So we can set up our equation again by determining the torques counterclockwise have to be balanced out by all the torques clockwise. And in this case, we've got two torques going clockwise and one torque going counterclockwise. So we've got the force in the y across the distance for that one equals the force from the center of mass, or the weight, I should say, across its location, let's call it d2, plus the force from that unknown mass, we just call it 2, uh, and its distance from the fulcrum. All distances are measured from the fulcrum. So we've got 205.21 at a distance of 0 0.8 meters. We've got the weight of the bar. Now, we weren't given the weight, we were given the mass. So that means we're going to have to do times 9.8 to get to the weights. Because remember, weight equals mass times gravity times the distance, which that one is. 0 0.7 plus this force, which we don't know. And we are looking for the weight, so that's good. And that's the, that's the weight of this one. And its distance, which is 2 meters away. Now that we got things set up, we, it's just basically a plug and chug type problem. So 205.21 times 0.8 gives this side 164.17.8 times 9.8 times 0.7. This is 5.49, let's call it, plus F and 2. So we're going to take that 164.17 minus the 5.49 then divide by 2. And we get that the force or weight needed, I'm going to change that to weight because that's what it is, is equal to 79.34 newtons. Okay, we got that one down. That wasn't that bad. But on all these, we've had all the forces acting down. Let's see if we put ourselves in a different situation. So this time, the fulcrum's here because we're lifting up. And so we want to keep that bar from flipping. And we put a mass over on one side. The center mass is again in the middle. And I want to know how much upward force we need to use right there to keep that bar stable. Torques counterclockwise versus torques clockwise. So on this one... Oh, we have to check. Okay, this one is going to cause us to rotate this way, which that's counterclockwise. The weight of its board itself is going to do the same thing, counterclockwise. This force here is going to push up, causing it to try to rotate this direction. So that's clockwise. So we got two counterclockwise and one clockwise. Well, that doesn't make any difference. We're just going to add up the torques and make sure that they balance out on both sides. So we've got the torque from the first thing plus the torque from the center mass, let's call that 2, has got to be balanced out by the third torque from that force. Okay. And it's just force cross distance. So force cross distance for the first one, plus force cross distance for the second thing, equals force cross distance or displacement for the third thing. All right, let's see what we got. We got... Uh, a one meter long bar, so center mass should be halfway in, so that should be one meter right there. Okay, that's two meters away because it's on the opposite end. 
the force is going to be at 0.6 meters. All right, we don't know what the force is. So, and remember, we're doing weight, which is mass times gravity. Okay, so this one, 20 kilograms times 9.8 times that distance is 2 plus 3 kilograms times 9.8 and that distance is 1. Oh, that makes it easy. It equals this unknown force times the distance that it is from the fulcrum, which is 0.6. Okay, just plug in chunk time. So 20 times 9.8 times 2 plus 3 times 9.8 equals that. 421.4 equals force 0.6. Divide both sides by 0.6. And we get a force that we need is 702.33 newtons to balance that out all right thank you and tune in again for some more rotational dynamics goodbye